Hello boys and girls, welcome back. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, right, so the challenge is, can I build this in a day? It's already uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I've just done the little unboxing video, which you can probably find somewhere. Uh, Amazon arrived with the paint just in the nick of time, which was lucky because I didn't have most of the paints I needed. Weirdly, I could have probably got by with something simpler, but I wanted to get the right ones. Um, so, right, well, I better get on with it then, I suppose. Don't know how this is going to turn out because it's been a very long time since I've done one against the clock. Like, you know, 40 odd years. But I just thought it'd be, be fun rather than having it. Oh, excuse me. Uh. Yeah, I just thought it'd be fun rather than having it laying around and leisurely, leisurely doing it. I thought I'd uh, just get cracking with this one. So, very simple instructions. That's it. Hop one page. So, I guess the the first thing is to paint our little man. I got an email from Epix a couple of days ago saying, oh, it's it's been dispatched. Uh, went through the, the paint. So what I do is I go through some conversion charts and I write down, in this case, Humbrol, because that's what Epix use, obviously. So I write down their numbers, the name of it, and then Vallejo or Tamiya and then go through and make sure I've got them. And if not, then I order them. It's a little system. Um, but then I can refer back to that easily rather than going through the conversion charts and going backwards and forwards and stuff. So, little handy tip. But, um, I'll try and get Vallejo ones when I can, just cause I'm sort of used to them now. But I seem to be getting more and more Tamiya ones. Just depends on what's available, really. And like there, I've got a Humbrol one. Now, I've only had one Humbrol paint so far in their new acrylic style. Uh, and it was the... It was yellow. And... I think all yellows are a bit on the thin side, aren't they? I think that's a, it's just the nature of pigments and things. So hopefully it's not gonna be the same with this one. If you've not seen these before, they're little glass mixing balls. So every time I get a paint, put one of these in it and it helps when you shake it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll do his boots in a sec and then I'll do his helmet on top to, to cut him off. So it says to do his boots in black, but I'm going to do it dark grey because black's a bit too harsh, I think. Of course, not going to see much of this because he's going to be on a piece of cotton hanging from the ceiling. Which is where they should all live. 
It's really hard to do the inside of the fuselage next. Oh, it's a nice fit. Lines up well. And yeah, it doesn't need any filler. Nice. Okay, so I'll just put a bit of the interior green, you know, kind of, yeah. This is a new one. So same again, I'll put a little glass blob in it. So I'm just going to paint the inside of the cockpit there. Uh, I thought I might, yeah, it says to do this sort of floor area here. I might as well slop a bit around inside there in case you can see any of it. Yeah, this hump roll is a little bit on the thin side. Don't know if you can sort of see that. Could do be in a don't know a little bit. I mean, the paint itself is not thin. It's just it's not covering very well. You can sort of see through it a bit. But a couple of coats will be fine. No, it's not even sticking. So I think I may have to give it a wash after all. Yeah, you can see the paint's just peeling straight off that. Mm, yeah, that side's not too bad. Get a moment that one, but this one, it just came straight off. So I'll just give it a quick wipe over with a, a cotton bud and a bit of um, thinners rather than, <clears throat> rather than get all the soapy water out and ages doing that so yeah just a bit of airbrush thinner yeah that's better it's still fairly see-through, but it's sticking. So, probably would, would have been worth giving this a wash after all. Of course, I could have just primed it, that would have helped. But, uh, yeah, didn't want to take all that time. Don't know, it's probably a good idea though. But I'll try it without. People seem to sort of go one way or the other with priming, don't they? Some people, oh no, you've got prime here. Others are like, nah, don't worry about that. Don't need primer. Um, I'm, I don't know. It seems like a good idea. Certainly on big areas. Again, I've got these holy stick things. I 
So I'll leave the bit where his bum actually goes. There's no point painting that because it will stop it from sticking and you can't see it anyway. A minute. Okay, so there's a where is it? So there's this bit here, this clear part on the end, which fits into the the floor. So like that. So this is going to be a fiddly one. Look at all that detail on there. Lots of framework there to paint. Mm, I have to get the magnifying glass out for that one. Um, hmm. Do I fit it, paint it after? Or try and paint it now and then mask over it? No, I'll probably pull the paint off when I mask it. So, yeah, I'll stick it in in a minute. I'll give that a bit longer to dry first, though. So, section one. So, I'm just giving these bits a chance to dry. Um, but I might as well fit the wings on. Gonna pop these down a little bit. I think they're just stopping it from quite seeking at the end. Yeah, lovely fit. Yeah, just that liquid injection pin mark. Those things there, where the plastic's injected into the mould. Just that last one there was a little bit high. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, and that one there's got a bit of flash on it as well, so just get rid of that. Oh, that fits very nice as well. Lovely. Right, let's get the glue. Right, <clears throat> so far so good. Uh, I'm gonna go and get a cuppa. Back in a moment. So what would have been a good idea would have been if I'd fitted the clear part before the wings. I'd have had a little bit more room there. But I can still just about get my little finger. There we go. Oh, I'm going to risk it with a bit of extra thin. I don't think the PVA stuff's going to hold it. So I'm going to bash it around a bit, try to. Ugh. As I'm going to bash it around, I think I'd probably knock it out. Yeah, definitely worth putting that in first. <laughs> there we 
goes. Right, leave that alone for a bit. Right, what else can we do? Uh, so that's that bit done. So what, I've just got to put the pipe. Oh. Does he have to, f oh, is he? Oh. I'm just wondering if that's gonna fit in there now. Oh, have I been an idiot? Is that going? Oh uh, yeah, there's a little shelf in there. Oh, oh whew. it's lucky. <laughs> Whew. I might as well stick that in now, eh? Right, okay. <laughs> Leave that alone for a bit. Alright, okay, let's do something else. Uh, okay, so we can do this bit. So, yeah, so the Air Force version is version A. Uh, so B has this presumably gun at the front. Okay, so I'll make the T urn and put that on. Paint the tea and put it on. So we got black with 56, an aluminium band around it. Okay. Let me know if you know what it is. It's probably not a tea urn, is it? Oxygen tank? Be exposed. together. Okay, so I'm just going to put that fuse bars together with the arrestor hook. Let's get that out. Hmm. That's interesting. So the arrestor hook slides up and down this slot here and then later on it shows you it all the way out. Um, but as I've got him in flight, I'll have that all the way in. So I think I'll put a dab of glue on that just to stop it flying around. So if you wanted to show it on a flight deck or about to land or something, you could have the arrestor hook all the way up. You can just see it poking out the back there. Okay, let's make sure I haven't missed anything. So the tail bits go on and the T urn goes on after. Okay. So we can. Including that. I 
just having a look at the, the tail and hopefully see there's a small sort of locating slot in a bigger slot and put it in and it's a little bit wobbly so I'm gonna have to tape well quite a bit wobbly so I'm just gonna have to tape that to hold that in place so I've used a bit of that stuff and it seems to be holding the, the tail on straight enough so as long as I don't jiggle it, it should be okay looks pretty straight um, that means I can't do a lot with it for a while Oops. I'm just lining it up with the marks on here trying to see if it's straight yeah, I think that's all right. But just need to not prod it too much. Okay, so I've got just got to paint that bit and put that on. <clears throat> but I think I might leave that for now. Cause um, I'm gonna leave the canopy off while I paint the rest of it. Just put that on last. So it's probably gonna be easier if I leave that off as well. So this one, so you can put the canopy on and fit the two halves together. Uh, I think I'll leave that a minute so I don't dis disturb this bit. So I'll make up the engine section, but I'll probably paint all this first, or at least some of it. Uh, Trying to think what order to do things in. Mm, I'll have a look at assembly and see if I can make it so that the cow and this, I don't know what you call it, this bit here. See if I can paint them in line with the rest of it and then fit the propellers and that on after and then glue it on last. I'm not sure if I can do that or not. Let's have a look. So I was just working out if I could put the, the engine cowl on to the front. Maybe just like a tiny dab of glue just to hold it for when I paint it. <clears throat> and then pull it off to put the actual engine propeller on. Looks like I can. So I'll just clip the body together just to see if it all lines up. Um, I won't take it off again because it was a little bit awkward. It doesn't look like the pilot's going to fit through the hole, but it does. You just have to kind of jiggle it a bit to get it in. Uh, so I'm just going to glue this on, give it a minute, and then I'll be able to line up the, the cowl with it. Right. So while I'm giving that a minute to dry off, uh, I think I'll just paint the propellers and the engine. So it's saying the engine is black and the inside of the cowling is aluminium. Okay. Uh, I'll wait until I put that together, then I'll I'll wait until I put that together, then I'll paint it. But I can just quickly dab a bit of black on that. Might as well do the TN. Well, I've got the black paint out. Okay, that's that bit. Um, right, there's an awkward thing. Um, not too sure what to do about this. Looking at the colour. <clears throat> Let's 
spinner, nose cone, that bit. As you can see, it's sky colour for about half of it and then matte black. Uh, this is going to be awkward to mask. So I'm thinking do it sky and then when it's dry just really carefully try and get the black on it. Yeah, let's give it a go. So that's the colour that I got, XF21, which seems to correspond on conversion charts to that. Looks a little bit green to me, but yeah. <coughs> this is near as off. Well, that's what I've got, so that's what it's going to be. Right, one of Sarah's old hair dryers. Right, I'll give that a little while just to make sure it's dry. Um, yeah, not sure quite how I'm going to do that, doing the black bit. <coughs> thinking maybe like if you imagine that's the nose cone finding a some sort of tube that would just fit down over it halfway and then spray it and then take it off, hopefully not leave a mark mm, might work because I don't want to stick tape to it because it oh, masking up a, a cone shape is a bit awkward isn't it be easy to go scoobiffy. Mm -hmm. It's probably a really good way of doing it, but I don't know what it is. So it won't get done. Uh, right, let's glue these bits together. Okay, that's it. Right, that all fits together nicely. Okay, so I'm going to glue that together and then when it comes to painting, just hold it on there somehow <coughs> and take it off, put the engine propellers on that and then it can go back on at the end. Right, uh, right colour for his flying hat. Uh, let's have a little bit of... Not mud brown. Uh, burnt umber. Love a bit of burnt umber. Uh, and now his mate waist jacket. Lemon yellow then. Yeah, that look alright. Might be a bit bright, but over the top of the the brown that he's already wearing should be okay, I think. There he is.
Right, so here's the thought. <laughs> I've got it in the Dremel. <clears throat> it might still be a bit on the far side. I don't know if you'll see it spinning, but it's still going really quick. But if I'm careful, I might be able to get a line on it. <laughs> it's a bit of fun, whatever. Um, something doesn't fly off and go across the room, we'll be fine. Kind of working, kind of. I think we've done it. <laughs> okay. So unless I'm missing something, it's not telling me how to do it with wheels up, is it? Uh, so 56 can go, 27 can stay, maybe that bit can stay, let's have a look, see, see what it looks like. See, remember, this was always a bit of a, a problem was they built them to have the wheels down and yeah. well mind you we've got here tricky to read the numbers on here so we've got 27 30 I think that is it's that side and then 33 and 35 Can't see thirty three or thirty five. So perhaps there to have it wheels up. And then over here we've got looks like thirty four and thirty six. No, thirty one and twenty eight, I think that is. Uh, 31, 28, yeah, so if you're having the wheels down, you'd use them, but they look pretty much the same, but maybe, let's give it a try, so let's try, 30. so 27 wheels down, so let's try this one. <clears throat> Let's 
actually interesting if they've given you the parts but not told you how I fit them. Okay, so I'm going to try this side. So 28 is the one if it's down, which looks like that one. So I'll try this one. We'll grab a wheel. This is just kind of dry fitting it all together just to see what it looks like. Yeah, that's it, with a little bit of sanding. There we go. So the parts are there, just doesn't show them. It's like there should be another section somewhere else to show if you want the wheels up. Okay. Uh, do I want to put the wheels on? Yet. Um, yeah, I can spray it all and then just pick out the wheels hopefully afterwards. I'm not too sure about this. <clears throat> so the wheels stick out very slightly from the body. But it doesn't look like they'll fit any further in. Uh, maybe that's just how they were. So I've just done the same again with the other wheel. A little bit awkward getting... Uh, getting this bit flat and the wheel in. This wants to sort of pop out. So you have to sort of hold the wheel down and this down until it starts to set, but not that hard. And that's reasonably level. That's all right. I'm happy with that. Okay, so how are we getting over time? Uh, blimey, just gone six o'clock. So I had about a 40 minute break, so three and a half hours-ish. It's flying by. Yeah, forgive the pun. Um, yeah, it feels like I've only been at it for about an hour. But uh, yeah, quite a chuff with that. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. Fun little kit. Little diddy. Short tiny. Yeah, that's going to be a nightmare to paint. Mm. In fact, I think I'm going to leave that. I'll mask it and then leave it. Because if I try and paint those lines, I know I'm going to mess it up. They're just so fine. So tiny. It'll look better just left clear, I think. I know my limits. <laughs> 
Right. Okay, I think it's lunchtime. Dinner time. Food. Right, so I've been off and had egg and chips. Nom, nom, nom. So, what have I done? So I've masked over the glass bit on the bottom. It's just going to be too fiddly to, for me. Uh, I've just put a couple of dabs to hold the cowl in on the front, just for painting. Masked off the cockpit. And I've given it all a wipe down. And given how on a small scale, the paints reacted a little bit on this paint, on this plastic rather. I'm going to give it a prime, uh, just because I don't want to start spraying it and then it all goes wrong and then I've got to take it all off. And then, yeah. So it's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, so I think roughly, what I'll do is I'll do roughly underneath white and most of the top black and not worry too much about where it overlaps <clears throat> uh, and sort of roughly get the white over here as well and then mask it up and do it properly after I think I think that's what I'll do I don't know I'll make it up as I go along right wish me luck okay so I had a bit of a break back to it now it's, uh, mm -hmm. Nearly 10 o'clock. So it's had black primer on the top, white on the bottom. And it's had some of the sky colour. Which came out really nicely. So I must be slightly getting the hang of an airbrush now. Slightly. Still don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so next is mask this up. And start painting the top. Mm. Okay, so I've masked up the, the bottom. I'm hoping I can get away with not masking the wings. Uh, so I'm going to give it a coat of the green, which I'm not sure about. I've double checked it and apparently it is the right green, but it doesn't look like the picture. I'm hoping it comes out a little bit darker. Otherwise I'm going to have to do it all again. So I'm going to spray it with that and then do the brown on top. See what happens. Okay, so it's had it's coat of 895 gunship green, which, yeah, it's not bad, I suppose. It doesn't quite look like the, the picture, but I think it's believable. Uh, blasted it with a hairdryer. So now I've got to put on the brown. Um, this is where I'm a bit unsure whether to try masking it up with a bit of blue tack, uh, which I've seen people do. Uh, I've ordered some of the proper camouflage putty, but it hasn't arrived yet. Um, so that's for a future thing. But I'm thinking, should I give it a try with the airbrush? Just see if I can <laughs> keep my hand steady enough to do it. Or, or do I play it safe? Should I mask it with tape? I don't know. What shall I do? What shall I do? Oh, and um, one of you kindly commented. It's a little bit late in the day now, but. Um, <laughs> commenting on the unboxing video that the window in the bottom was only for the US Navy version and Airfix made a mistake by leaving it on the RF one so I could have blanked that off but a little bit late now never mind live and learn it just shows that I should read the comments sooner rather than later I was just having a brew and thought oh I'll have a look see if anyone's left anything and sure enough a handy tip and it's and I've missed it darn but uh, yeah thanks for chipping in it's much appreciated even if I am a bit slow in picking them up but I'm really happy with the result so far the airbrushing's going really well 
Um, I haven't messed it up. I haven't got any on the bottom. I haven't got any thumbprints anywhere. Hmm, very unusual. So no doubt I'll drop it on the floor and tread on it in a minute. So it's half past 11. Still at it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as you can see, I've masked it up with blue tack and kitchen roll. So yeah, I don't know if this is gonna work, but it's fun trying. Jacko just wants to get out. He's had enough. Right, well, it is now two minutes to midnight. I've sprayed the brown on. So I'm just going to give it a few more minutes to dry and then see if the blue tack peels off all the paint. I don't know if it will or not. Never tried this before. So exciting times. So time for a brew and a bourbon. Nom, nom, nom. So moment of truth, does blue tack take paint off? I hope not. Well, seems to have worked. I just put my thumb on a bit and it was still slightly tacky. So I'm going to have to leave it a bit longer, I think. But it's come off. There's just one little bit there where I think it bled underneath. That might be a bit of blue tack still on there. No, it's just a bit of blue tack. Brilliant. Well, that's worked really well. So if the um, the expensive camouflage putty, which I've ordered a little tin and it's about 16 quid, I think. Well, if it's any better than this, then it should be great. But I probably wouldn't want to leave it on there for long, just in case over time it sort of eats into the paint, I don't know. If you've used this before, it's just cheap sort of supermarket brand blue tack. Um, I'm really chuffed with that. That was really easy to do. Uh, and I think that's my best ever camouflage job in my whole life. So uh, yeah, yeah, very happy moment. <laughs> right, I'll let that dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna paint the canopy back in a bit. So that's all the masking off. Um, come out really well. A couple of tiny bits bled through there, very slight. Other than that, really nice. Oh, a little tiny bit there. Um, yeah, shame about that. I could have covered that up, but oh, it's so tiny. I will make a mess of that if I try and do it. Um, done the canopy. It's all right. Just say fiddly in my, I've got new glasses and I still can't see properly up close. Never mind. Um, right, so I've got the back wheel to do, paint those wheels, put the propeller on, put the, put the engine on. Um, yeah, canopy on. Okay, just a few fiddly little bits, so I'll just get them done and then uh, see how it looks. Right, well the canopy's on. It doesn't quite line up. There's a slight gap at the back, but it's the best I could do to fit it all together. So, yeah, it's not too bad. Could probably just make out a little gap there. 
Um, so the the engine's in there. Little bit. There's like little pegs inside that locate on the cylinders of the engine. You have to glue it onto that. Uh, I'm being a little bit delicate with it because otherwise that will come away once that's on and everything will bobble about. Uh, it still turns. That's unusual. <laughs> uh, I'll leave that for a bit longer though. Uh, so what's left to do? Tail wheel, paint the wheels. Right, let's do that. Right, well that's it all built. Uh, yeah, tidy. Not bad for a 51 year old kit, even if they've cleaned it up a little bit. Um, yeah, pleased about how the paint came out. Fit together, perfectly all right. Nothing glaringly bad about it. Would have been handy if the instructions mentioned having the wheels down, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's a fun little build that. So I'm just gonna get the decals on. And then finally, I can go to bed. Right, well it's half past two in the morning and it's finished, yay. So 12 and a half hours, start to finish. And I've really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, just put some uh, micro sol on it just to settle down the decals. And then tomorrow I might give it a, a quick varnish, see how it goes. But yeah, I'm quite chuffed with that. Fun little kit. If you're thinking about getting one for a 51 year old kit, it's pretty good. But if you're thinking it's like anything Airfix have knocked out in the last few years, it's a bit basic, but it still fits together well. Looks good. The decals are good. Yeah, thumbs up from me. Nice one Airfix, well done for bringing that one back. So uh, yeah, I shall let that dry overnight and find some cotton to hang it from the ceiling tomorrow. So there we go. Brilliant. All right, well, thanks very much for, for watching and uh, see you with whatever I come up with next time. Cheers. Bye. Love.